I have several points to discuss today, and uh, the point of the point that I was that I'm going to discuss about uh, how are we going to participate. We we, we heard about uh, uh, a lot from Pastor Joseph and Pastor Boy about the expansion of the uh, uh, ministry of the Lord. Uh, what I want to discuss today is about uh, how are we going to participate? What would be my involvement in that endeavor, in that undertaking? Okay? Right. So basically, our overall theme for the whole year is about expanding God's territory. And ex expansion is actually an act of... Uh, becoming bigger or making something bigger. Have you heard of uh, expansion that is decreasing or becoming more small? No? There's no such thing as expansion at lumilit ka. So whenever, whenever we talk about expansion, okay, especially when we talk about expanding God's territory, we must aim for growth and increase. Amen? Amen? Right. We aim to have an addition. Okay? We, have, we aim to add some more. Not only membership. We want to add some more uh, churches okay, as we expand. And not only an addition, we want also to multiply. Okay? But more than that, we aim to have an exponential growth. What is the difference between exponential growth and multiplication? Those engineers know about this well. Okay? Basically, when we talk about exponential growth, it says growth whose rate becomes ever more rapid in proportion to the growing total number or size. So the number multiplies by itself. That is more than multiplication. All right. I'm not going to lecture you about mathematics. I'm not very good also. So let's just proceed. During the annual planning, leaders were able to set a goal as a church to have, I think, 150 members or 175 before the end of this year. So 150 or 175 members and worshipers by the end of 2017. Although when we talk about expansion, we don't actually look at and limit the growth of the ministry on a local church level only. But when we talk about growth, we have to have a wider vision and to aim to expand the ministry on a global perspective. So, dapat malaki yung ano natin, malaki yung vision natin to expand the uh, work of the Lord. All right. As we are trying to expand our work here in Dubai, okay, sadly to say that some churches nowadays who have never gone through expansion because they either decrease or divided on a very early stage. Okay? This situation is most likely to happen when there is no unity within the church. Last month, we talked about unity, and we talked about causes, okay, or what we need to avoid in order for us to have unity, right? I hope and I, that you still remember those. So I spoke to a friend, he's a pastor, and he told me that the situation in his church is no longer good. And he said, the charge was separated because of a disagreement. Okay? What is disagreement? Some members want to change the name of the church. Okay? And some other don't want to change. Because some other churches, they wanted to remove the name Baptist in their name. All right? For some reason, I don't know. Okay? But here in FBIC, we will be a Baptist. Our name will remain the same. We will not change it. Okay. So there are seminar, other reasons why other churches divide, no? But we hope and pray uh, 
sa awa ng Panginoon that uh, this church will grow and we will expand more okay, beyond what we have here in Dubai. I came across a website called uh, Cultural China. And one of the topics that uh, in that website is about the 36 strategies of ancient China. What is this all about? Okay. Basically, that deals with how to become victorious over an enemy in this, uh, uh, how many? 36 strategies. Okay. But three strategies caught my attention. And I think uh, I, I, I was able to relate it to how our enemy is doing it to us and to other churches. Let me read to you. Okay. The first strategy is said, this is a strategy number two. It says there, avoid strength, attack weakness. Avoid strength, attack weakness. What it means? It means that you must avoid your enemy's strength when he's too strong. Okay. Have, have, can, can you relate to this one? Okay. It says that uh, avoid your enemy's strength when he's too strong, but attack its weakness. Everybody knows, everybody, every Christian knows, churches have weaknesses. People have weaknesses. And sometimes our enemy is attacking us not on our strong point, but in our weakest point. Okay. Next is that strategy number five. It says, disorder your enemy, order your army. It means that, it says that you have to disorder your enemy or wait for disordering by internal conflicts, okay, diseases, corruption, crimes. I don't think it happened it's in our church, but uh, I think the one that is very relevant to us is internal conflicts. Okay, I think some of this point was mentioned by Pastor Joseph when he discussed about unity. We should avoid competition. We should avoid cliques, right? And the third one is strategy number 15. It says, separate their power source to fill your advantage source. What does that mean? Means that you never take, you, may, you, you must, or you never must attack on strong enemy directly. But first, you have to lure him away from his source of strength and take advantage of your own source, and then attack your enemy, and that leads to victory. Okay. What I'm trying to tell you about these things, unknowingly, Satan is doing this to us. Satan is doing this to many churches. Satan is doing this to many Christians. Okay? And sometimes... Nagpapadala tayo. And sometimes, we didn't notice he's using us. Alright? That's why there was conflicts in churches. Okay. Therefore, a church, as a church, we must be watchful. We are to be on alert for danger, to take no unnecessary risks. While we are not to be suspicious as everyone and everything, we are to have our eyes open at all times. Okay. In the days of Nehemiah, if you read about the uh, building of the walls, when the walls of Jerusalem were revealed and the enemies of, the, of uh, God's people did all they could to hinder the work, and there was constant danger of attack, in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 7 says, Those who filled on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with other hand a weapon. These men trusted God, but also they watched. They have a confidence that God will 
fight for them, but uh, that does not hinder them for having weapons ready for an emergency. Okay. Remember that as we aim for like broad expansion of God's territory, attack from our enemy will always be there. So don't be reluctant. Okay. Let me just begin my message by presenting to you a certain need and a challenge for us as we aim to expand God's territory. Uh, please open your Bible in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. And may I request everyone to please rise in reverence to the reading of the Word of God. Let us read this responsively. I will read verse 35. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38, the Bible says, Then Jesus went out of all the cities and village, villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I'd like to thank you once again for this great opportunity that uh, we will be able to study your words again. Lord, as uh, we uh, study and listen to your words, Lord, we ask and pray that you would speak into our hearts, Lord, that you will give us wisdom and understanding that we will be able to understand your message for us this afternoon. Lord, I humbly submit myself to you as I uh, preach your word. May you cover me with, a, with your cross, Lord, and may the words that will come out from my mouth will be your words, Lord. May you be honored and uh, may your name be praised as we uh, study your words today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let me just first uh, start the message by giving us a, a challenge, all right? And as we read here, particularly uh, in verse 37, okay, there is a need. And Jesus Christ highlighted the needs to his disciples. And what is the needs? They need more workers all right okay there is a work to be done but there are few to do the work okay the multitude mentioned refers to the people who most probably heard the teachings of Jesus Christ those who have witnessed his healing and miracles and those who have heard him of him perhaps this uh, included in these uh, multitudes are those who have followed uh, John the Baptist when he was preaching about the coming Messiah. If we go back to chapter 4 of uh, Matthew, that is where Jesus Christ started his earthly ministry. And that is also the time when he called the first uh, four disciples. And who, who are these disciples? Is a Simon called Peter, his brother Andrew, uh, and another brother James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Okay? It says in uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 20 to 25, And Jesus went all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought him all sick people who were afflicted with virus disease, various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. And verse 25, it says, Great multitude followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond Jordan. And 
when I was when I was uh, studying this uh, message, this ca this came into my mind that be maybe perhaps, okay, these multitudes who follow Jesus Christ knew that he will come to his uh, own city, all right? If you read the first part of uh, Matthew chapter uh, 9, okay, it was mentioned there that Jesus is uh, coming to his uh, own city in Capernaum, okay? So, because many heard these teachings and uh, witnessed the healing and miracles he performed, Jesus then became famous as uh, uh, we read in verse 25, and great multitudes follow him. So it leads me to an assumption that when they learn that Jesus will be coming to his own city, they traveled there and waited for his coming. Some perhaps out of goodwill, some out of ill will or bad intention for the, bene for the benefit of their bodily cures or healing because they know Jesus Christ could heal or out of curiosity and some to see miracles all right others to hear his doctrine some for the goods of their soul and some probably followed him out of love and to learn from him okay but See, these are different kind of people. These are different uh, characteristics of people who are in that multitude, who are in that crowd. Okay. But regardless of the purpose, why this multitude is there, why this people is there, Jesus cares for them. He cares for their physical condition. But more than that, he is more concerned about their spiritual condition. One commentary in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 says, The state of things suggested two pictures to his mind. First, a neglected flock of sheep and a harvest going to waste for lack of reapers. Both imply not only a pitiful plight of the people, but a blameworthy neglect of duty on the part of their religious guides. The shepherds by profession without the shepherd's heart. The spiritual husband man without an eye for, a white, for the whitening fields and skills to handle the sickle. Okay, so this, uh, the commentary is suggesting that this is how Jesus see that pity scenario, okay? There are three things that Jesus wants to teach his disciples, and I believe he also wants to teach us, as we read those passages in Matthew chapter 9. Okay, first, Jesus wants to teach his disciples, and I believe he wants also to teach us how to look at men. All right? Secondly, Jesus is teaching us how to peel at such a sight. Okay? And thirdly, Christ is teaching us what to do with that feeling. Okay? So he teaches us how to look at men. All right? And what, we, what are we going to feel in that kind of situation? And what are we going to do? Jesus speaks to us through his words this afternoon to become sensitive to the needs of other people around us. That we should not, that, that we should think about the multitude that we see every day, okay? To look at them the way he sees them. The multitudes may be people close to you, your friends, your relatives, maybe your uh, housemates, okay? Your, your, your uh, maybe even people that you don't know, people that you see around, okay? So, Jesus Christ wants us to consider them, to look at them, and to think about them. He wants us to have some compassion and concern as he has for them. Jesus is telling us that there is a great work 
to be done and he's inviting us to be a part of that great work okay our team for this month is about expanding in ministry right last two weeks ago uh, we had a company meeting and uh, one of the topics that uh, in our agenda is about increasing the revenue to a very significant amount and uh, we are quite few in the office about 20 uh, 20 people and we have four major business units within the group and so the uh, uh, what do you call this the uh, regional director urged us to work together and to do our share in order to achieve that goal brethren to expand the ministry of god also requires participation from every believers or each member of a local church in order to fulfill the mission that god has given us this afternoon i have uh, three points in my outline to challenge us in response to this invitation okay first i will uh, show you the outline okay first we must pray for the expansion of god's ministry okay next is we must invest for the expansion of god's ministry and lastly we must evangelize for the expansion of the ministry okay i doubt it i will be able to finish this today but at least i will uh, uh, look into the first point and i think the rest i can uh, share it to you during the prayer meeting all right let me begin with the prayer why prayer okay why we must pray okay prayer as defined in the dictionary as a solemn request to help or expression of thanks addressed to god of an object of worship another one is an earnest hope or wish okay an article, an article wrote the most basic definition of prayer is talking to God. When we pray to God, we actually talk to Him. You agree? Prayer is not meditation or passive reflection. It is direct address to God. It is the communication of the human soul to the Lord who created the soul. Prayer is the primary way of the believers in jesus christ to communicate emotions and desires with god and fellowship with god with god okay so basically when we pray it is our way of talking to god it is our way of communicating to god it is our way that we can tell to god what our uh, what we want, what we need, okay? Say, why prayer is essential in relation to the expansion of God's ministry, okay? Expanding the ministry of God is more of a spiritual warfare rather than a physical battle. Do you agree? All right? It is more on a spiritual battle rather than a uh, physical battle Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 it says for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places and since this is a spiritual warfare we must acknowledge that we cannot do things without the special supernatural grace of God. Therefore, all our plans, all our endeavors must begin with prayer. Agree? Can you tell to your seatmate? Let us pray. Let us attend the prayer meeting. <laughs> right. So I have three points to share with you about the important goal 
of expanding the ministry of the Lord is concerned. Okay. One reason why we should pray is because when we pray, we will be able to present our petition to God. Okay? In other words, it is request. Okay? So when we pray to God, we are telling Him our petition. When we pray to God, we are telling Him our request. Okay? Someone says that a prayer of petition is a prayer that includes personal needs and the needs of others. Prayers are a form of communication with God. Prayers of petition are also known as prayer of supplication. Prayers of petition intended for others are also known as prayers of intercession. All right? When you intercede, okay, in behalf of another person, okay, that is a prayer of intercession. And I believe we studied about this type of prayers in the prayer meeting. Those who uh, attend prayer meetings, I believe you know about this. And the other one is, uh, you, you know, the other prayer. An imprecatory prayer. And you can see most of that in the prayers of David in Psalms. Okay. Having said that, our prayer is, in this case, is not for our personal prayer. Okay. This is what I want to tell you this afternoon. Okay. The prayer that I want to tell you here is not for our personal prayer, prayer but this is more on the goal of the church. Okay. We must pray for the goal of the church to expand the ministry of the Lord. Okay. Is that our prayer must be for the expansion of the ministry. Why? Because many souls or many are lost and that expansion of the ministry would enable us to reach them and bring them to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay? When we pray for expansion of the ministry, we are praying in behalf of those people who doesn't know Christ. Agree? Amen? Okay. So our intercession must be for them. Do you uh, do unbelievers or do people that doesn't know God pray to him, Lord, send laborers to reap us? I don't think so. First and foremost, they don't know God. They said they, don't, they know God, but in reality, they don't know God. They don't have personal relationship with God. And only believer has a personal relationship with God. Okay, that's why Jesus asked his disciples to say, pray to the Lord of the harvest, that he may send uh, workers. Okay. So when we pray for the expansion of the ministry, we are praying in behalf of them. I'm referring to the lost. That the Lord of the harvest would reach them by sending more laborers that would share the gospel and bring them to Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. See, I, I am a father of two. Okay? And to my level as an earthly father, okay, somehow I am able to, uh, to know uh, some of their needs and maybe some of their wants as well before they come to me and tell me. Okay? There were times that even when they don't tell me, I am uh, very willing to give them. Okay? Yet many times or many cases, I want them to, I want to hear it from them. Okay. Why? Because I want them to speak it out and communicate to me. And I believe God, Jesus Christ, he also wants to hear from us. That's why we, we, will, uh, we, we, we read in uh, the passage of chapter 9, verse 38, that he asked his disciples to pray to the Lord of the harvest. Okay. It, that's why in the context of Matthew chapter 9, verse 38, Jesus, in the preceding verses, precisely knew 
about the need and of course he is able to answer and provide for the needs okay however he urged his disciple to pray and pray that the lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into the harvest but let us understand who the lord of the harvest is in one commentary that i read it says that by the lord of the harvest by that praise the lord of the harvest is either meant god the father whose are all the elect who's uh, who has the hearty uh, concern from uh, from for them and will have them all gathered in not one of them shall let or shall be let or it may be referring to jesus christ jesus christ himself who has the care and charge of all whole election of grace and who as he must he will bring them all and who has the power to send for laborers as following churches referring uh, as following a chapter referring to chapter 10 okay and so this is a proof of prayer being made to jesus christ so in this uh, the, uh, the, this commentary is uh, saying that the Lord of the harbor itself is Jesus Christ himself. Now, if Jesus Christ himself is the Lord of the harvest, who apparently knows the need and is able to provide them, then what is the reason behind asking his disciples to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers in this case it is him there are four things that i uh, uh, was able to extract from this the first one is jesus christ wants his disciple to see the urgency he wants his disciple to see the readiness of the harvest if you look at luke chapter one uh, John chapter 4 verse 35 the Bible says do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest but Jesus Christ says to his disciple behold I say to you leap up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for harvest okay so Jesus wants us wants his disciple to see the urgency of the work of the mission Okay. Next, the Lord of the harvest himself wishes himself to be moved by them because only him can send people to gather them. Okay. He wanted to be moved by them. He knows that there is a need. He knows that he can supply the need. But he wants to hear from his disciples. He wants to hear from us to pray to him okay to present to him a request all right third he wants his disciple to express the request as if it is their personal need through prayer he wants his disciple to present the request on behalf of men which is the harvest as mentioned there and lastly he wants his disciple to have compassion okay it was mentioned in the verses that we read jesus has this his compassion toward the harvest so he wants his disciple to have compassion to the harvest and by making a request and by making a request to god to send laborers one commentator said by the reference of the harvest here he meant that the multitude of the people that flocked to his ministry was great can you imagine the great multitude who uh, waited for Jesus Christ to arrive, all right? He says it was a great uh, multitude. The people expected the Messiah. They were prepared, uh, they were prepared to receive the gospel, but the laborers were few. He directed them, therefore, to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth reapers. God is the proprietor of the 
great harvest of the world, and He only can send people to gather them. Brethren, our intention in expanding God's ministry is to win more souls for the glory of God, okay? To bring them to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to disciple them so that the same desire will be built into their hearts and will reciprocate what they have learned from us to others. So if you imagine, if we share the word of God, if we go out there and share the gospel to other people and we convert them and they, be, they become a disciple of Jesus Christ as well, okay, the desire that we have to disciple them will become their desire as well. And as a result, more laborers will be raised from among us and from the people that we are going to share the gospel. And let us pray that as we heard this message that God will speak to us into our hearts and will move us so that, uh, that we'll be able to see how God sees the people around us so that we'll be able to that so that we will be have, we will have compassion with them and through prayers let us bring our petition to God that he will send more laborers including us to reap the harvest John 3:16 says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life and i believe jesus died for for all okay he came into this world for the sinners, and if possible, he wanted no one to perish. Jesus has begun his work more than 2,000 years ago. He's still planting seeds in the hearts of the people every day. Now, we have to do our part, and we have to pray to God according to his will. The Bible says, when we pray, God will hear us. 1 John chapter 5, verse 9, it says, This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Okay? So that's the first point. Okay? We need to pray, we have to pray, because that is the way that we can bring, that we can present our request to God, our petition to God. For whom? For those people who doesn't know Him so that God will send laborers to the uh, harvest field. Okay. Not only that we must present our petition to God, but when we pray, we can rely that God, we can rely to God that He will, give, he will, he will grant us power for us to do His will, for He is a powerful God. We come to God for prayer because we know that He is omnipotent, omnipotent or all power God, or all power God. Ephesians chapter one verses eighteen to twenty-three. The Bible says, "The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of His glory and inheritance in the saints." And that is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. For above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age but also in that which is to come, and he put all things under his feet, referring to Jesus Christ, and he gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, and the fullness of him who fills all in all. A certain A.W. Tozer said, since he has his command all the power in the universe, the Lord God omnipotent can do anything as easily 
as easily as anything else. All his acts are done without effort. He expends no energy that must be replenished. His self-sufficiency makes it unnecessary for him to look outside of himself to renew, for a renewal of strength. All the power required to do all that he wills to do lies in an undiminished fullness in his own infinite being. As I've mentioned earlier, when we talk about the expansion of uh, God ministry, when we talk about expanding the work of the Lord, we are dealing with a spiritual battle. Okay? And we need the power that is coming from Him, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to enable us to do what He commanded us to do. You know, the ruler of this world will do everything to hinder Christians, to hinder believers, to fulfill the missions that God has given us, all right? Uh, when I was, when I was uh, preparing this message, there's a lot of hindrances that came into me. He made me very busy in my job. He made me very uh, uh, tired. He's trying to uh, parang uh, uh, Parang ang gusto niyang gawin ay for me not to finish the, the, uh, the message. But I believe it is the will of God for me to finish this message so that uh, we will be able to hear it today. And that is what God did. Okay. As believers, okay, the, rule of the, yeah, the ruler of this world will do everything, as I have mentioned. But God is still sovereign. Okay. As believers of Jesus Christ, we are no longer under the rule of Satan. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, He has delivered us from the power of darkness okay, and conveyed us into the kingdom of His Son, His love. Now, now that we belong to the kingdom of God, we must recognize that we are now under the all-powerful and sovereign God. Believers of Christ, believers of Jesus Christ must therefore realize that it is the power of Him who delivered us from the domain of darkness that will cause us to win the spiritual battle. Amen? Okay. Ephesians chapter 10, 6 verse 10, the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Brethren, we must pray to God for spiritual strength, for power, for wisdom, in order for us to do His will. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20, the Bible says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful, to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for the saints, and Paul says, and for me. Okay. That utterance, that the word may be given to me, Paul says, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador, I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak. When we depend on, someone says, when we depend on men, we get what men can do. When we depend on prayer, we get what God can do. All right? So it says is if we depend on our own capability, if we depend on our own ability, Okay? We expect only the things that man can do. All right? But if we depend on prayer, if we ask God in prayer, what we will be expecting is what God can do for our prayers. 
If you look at Luke chapter 10, verse 1 to 6, this is when God sent the 12 disciples to the mission fields. All right? Jesus Christ did not tell his uh, 12 disciples to go and preach the, uh, the gospel. Before they go, Jesus had given them the power and authority. Okay? To proclaim the kingdom of God. Okay? Another thing is, he, 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 he told the disciples not to bring anything. He says in verse 3, he told, uh, he told them, take nothing for a journey. No stop, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Okay? Maybe for us, no gadgets. No, no credit cards. No? What, 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 what God is telling to us is God wants us believers to have a full dependency on His power. Okay? Full dependency on His power alone. That's why, you know, God is using ordinary people, sometimes weak people, to do His, uh, His great work. Can you imagine if I am a strong person, maybe uh, a very intelligent person, maybe a very famous person, all right? And God sent me to do His ministry, okay? I may boast, okay, because I am an intelligent person. I'm just assuming, okay? I may boast. I may not recognize that the power of God is in me, all right? I may say that I was able to do that. I was able to preach the word of God because I have a good knowledge. I was able to win a lot of souls because I have a good, uh, a good uh, reputation. I am famous. Okay? So that doesn't glorify God. That's why in many cases, God is using ordinary people. People we don't even uh, uh, expect na pwede niyang gamitin. Who would have known... Uh, the guy who doesn't have hands, no hands, no lips, huh? who would have known that he will become famous in preaching the word of God, in sharing the word of God? Okay? Kung baga sa atin, parang siya, wala na siyang, uh, wala na siyang, uh, he's parang useless. No? Wala na siyang pwedeng gawin. But God used him mightily to preach his word. And he's traveling a lot. Okay. I was I was uh, I was uh, reading his uh, his story when he was young, about ten years old. He wanted to commit suicide because he thought that he's uh, wala na siya kumbaga wala na siya magagawa, no? But God worked in his life, and He transformed him. Okay, from that person to a. Uh, person that is usable by God. Okay. And I know that uh, you know a lot of people kagaya nito, no? Na hindi natin alam na parang parang sa tingin lang natin, ah, hindi siya no, parang yan magpapastor, parang hindi naman ano, hindi naman siya bagay. But God can use him mightily, no? To uh, proclaim his uh, his gospel. That's why use God is using ordinary people may it be you if you desire for it, okay? Maybe anybody, anybody from us. James Hudson Taylor says, God uses men who are weak and feeble enough to lean on Him. So it's all dependence to God, okay? Brethren, expanding the ministry is a spiritual butter and therefore, Jesus Christ must be our commander in chief. He is the only one who can direct us. He is the only one who can sustain us spiritually with his spiritual strength. And he is the one who can give us the power and authority that would enable us to do what he has commanded us to do. And that is to proclaim the gospel. 
Brethren, let us pray that He will empower those who are already in the mission field and those uh, and doing the harvest for the Lord. We must pray that the Lord will grant power and authority to those who are willing and able to do His will. We must pray for ourselves as well, that God will use us to minister to those people around us. Okay? John Piper says, It is the greatness of God, not the significance of man. God made man small and the universe big to say something about himself. This is simply, uh, simply telling us that we can do nothing without God, without the power of God. Okay. So when we pray, we can uh, we'll be able to present our request to God, and we can rely to God that He will grant us power for us to do His will, for He is a powerful God. And lastly, He says, God is pleased in prayer of the righteous. You believe in this? Who attend prayer meeting? Sino nag ng prayer meeting? I, why, why, why I am asking? Because if you're attending the prayer meeting, you, see, you, 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 will, you will understand how God is working with the prayers. One will, uh, will tell her this, his or her testimony that God has answered our prayers. And that's really exciting, no? That uh, nakikita natin kung paano sinasagot ng ating Panginoon na ating mga uh, uh, panalangin. Okay. The word please is synonymous to the word gratify and delight, which means to give pleasure, to give joy or satisfaction. Okay. God delights in answering prayers of the righteous. Are you righteous? You doubt. <laughs> okay. But that's the Bible saying, God, is delight, God delights in answering the prayer of the righteous. Look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8. The Bible says, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the outright it is delight. Another thing is in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. The Bible says, the Lord is far from the wicked, but He hears the prayers of the righteous. So this will give us a confidence that when we pray, especially when we are having our corporate prayers, when we are in our prayer meeting, when we pray to God, when we're doing interceding to other uh, people, God hears our prayers. And I believe with all my hearts that if God if you are able to please God with your prayers, then He would answer your prayers. And I believe in this congregation, you can testify that God has answered your prayer. Not only that He hears your prayer, but He answered your prayers. Amen? Amen. All right. I was wondering, why, what, what, what hinders us from attending prayer meetings? While other can, why other other believers cannot? If so, we can. Why you cannot? Every prayer meeting is always there, no? Before we were having the prayer meeting, bahay bahay kami. So we have to travel and we have to spend uh, uh, more time because uh, minsan malalayo ang pinakamalapit dun sa amin sa Alnada, no? And sometimes, natatapos ng prayer meeting about 11 o'clock. And since may kainan pa, and nobody wants to miss the kainan, no? so they will stay and uh, have some refreshment. And by the time we finish, it's past 11 already. So this kind of sacrifice, okay, we're doing uh, before. So the leaders has uh, decided, okay, I think it's, it, it is better if we... We look for a common place to have a prayer meeting. So we decided to have the prayer meeting here in, in Grand Excelsior. 
And on the first, uh, on the first weeks, okay, uh, marami kong umaten. But uh, uh, I, I just cannot uh, understand why sometimes we cannot attend prayer meeting. Of course, there are some uh, valid reasons why we can attend. But uh, for those who don't have valid reason, why don't you feel not attending prayer meeting? I, I, want, to to, to, I want to share with you some of the people or some of the Bible characters who pray to God and immediately God answered their prayers. Okay. The first one is Elijah. I think most of you knows the story of Elijah. Okay, Elijah is the prophet. Okay. Elijah showed that through his prayer to God of Israel, Yahweh was mightier than Baal. Okay. This was a traumatic demonstration against the pagan god Baal, who was thought to be the sky god, the god of the weather. And so, God answered Elijah's prayer and did not train for three years and six months. That's why there was a great famine in that land during that time. And again, he prayed for the rain and God answered his prayer once again and it did rain again. James chapter 5 verse 17 to 18 the Bible says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly that it would rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced fruits. James chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. Again, during the time of the famine, all right, God instructed Elijah to uh, go on a certain place and uh, uh, meet a widow. He stayed there. And what a miracle God did for that widow, for the family, all right? Okay? We know the story na hindi na uubos yung yung pagkain, and was sufficient for them, for Elijah and the, uh, uh, the mother and the son. But uh, Elijah stayed there further, and the son of that uh, widow got ill. He got sick, and eventually he died. And in 1 Kings chapter 17, 21 to 22, the Bible says, Elijah prayed to God. In verse 21, it says, And he stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. So this is an immediate answer from God. So, sometimes you say, I pray to God, but He is not answering my prayer. I was wondering why, if He is listening to my prayer. But have, brethren, you have, to, you have to think about your prayers. Okay? Means that say, when we pray, we are very selfish. No? Who among us pray for these people na we know that they will get perished if they will not come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Who among us to pray for them? Pray for them. Who among us pray for our relatives? Who among us pray for our enemies? Ay, hindi ko siya pagpe-pray. Bayaan ko siya mapunta sa inferno. No? Means that it's, it's, it's how you pray. Sometimes when we pray, it doesn't please God. That's why don't expect that you will receive an answer. No? You know the guy called Habit, Jabez? And do you know the prayer of Jabez? Okay, if you look at uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. Jabez prayed for blessings, an expansion of his territory, for the, present, uh, for the presence of God's hand, and protection from harm. Okay, if you look at uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 
4 verse 9 to 10, the Bible says, Now Jabez was more honorable, okay, more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. Sino pong buntes? Uh, bigyan niyo yung pangalan anak niyo Jabez pagka uh, pinahirapan kayo sa panganak. Okay. So he said, uh, and he prayed to God and said, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Okay. Another person, another uh, character in the Bible, and I believe you know him very much, is King Solomon. Okay? King Solomon prayed for wisdom. Okay? And the Lord was pleased with his request, and God did according to the request of Solomon. And not only that, not only that, God did according to the request of Solomon, but he also gave to Solomon what he did not ask. If you look at 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 10 to 14, the Bible says, The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, Because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, and have asked rich and nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding and to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. Okay? See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, says the Lord, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. And I have also given, and I also have given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like among you, among, among the kings all your days. Okay? So God placed the prayer of Solomon. If you look at the first part of the verse, he's not praying for himself. He prayed for wisdom. For, wisdom. for whom? So that he will be able to discern justice. He did not ask, Lord, give me more wealth. Lord, make me famous. Lord, make my, li make my life longer. He didn't ask for that. His prayer was very self uh, hindi siya hindi siya selfish no no but god pleased his prayer to uh, god pleased with his prayer and as a as a uh, response to him god answered his prayer and and the bible says not only what he asked but also those that he did not ask and brethren this is a great encouragement for us to pray because God will surely hear and answer our prayers when we please Him and that our prayers is in accordance to His will. And I believe it is His will that His ministry will grow and that His ministry will expand and His gospel will be preached to all nations. I, I heard, uh, I think it was Jeff who says, Pa prayer is there is power in prayer okay and I believe all of us agree with that we'll agree to that that there is power in prayer amen, amen. okay so now hearing that the, uh, that uh, there is power in prayer I hope and pray that uh, more more people or more uh, members will be joining us during the prayer meeting every year uh, Monday. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> Parang may hiya, no? Okay. But I encourage you, brethren, the, 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 the expression, there is power in prayer, is very meaningful. 
No? Don't just make it as an expression. Okay. Gawin po natin sa buhay natin. Because there is really power in prayer. Okay? These people who I uh, shared with you, there are few. They are just few. But if you read the Bible, you can see more of them. Okay? That God answered their prayers. And God pleased with their prayers. And some prayers been answered immediately. Okay? And I, as I mentioned earlier, if you will listen to the testimonies of those who are attending the prayer meetings, you will be blessed. Okay? Walang job ngayon. Alright? We prayed. Okay? Several weeks after, nagkaroon ng job. Okay? Yun lang nga minsan, nagpray lang ng job. Walang contract. <laughs> minsan nagpray ng job, may contract, wala namang swell ng pinagpray. <laughs> so when we pray to God, we have to be very specific. Okay? We have to tell to God. But in this case, what we are trying to say here, okay, we have to pray for God to send people to reap the harvest. As I mentioned earlier, God is continuously planting seeds into the hearts of those people around us, those people who don't know us. Okay? And it is respon our responsibility to do our part. That prayer is powerful and certainly effective. Brethren, our time is not wasted. You know, when we pray, our time is not wasted when we pray. Jesus asked his disciple, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest field. And I believe as we have the goal of expanding the ministry of God, he is also telling us to pray as well. We aim to expand God's ministry, and therefore, we must participate in this undertaking by fervently praying for that. Amen? Amen. Okay. James chapter 5, verse 16 says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Okay? Now, let me close with this. Someone says, To this day, Vast multitudes are as sheep not having a shepherd. And we should have compassion and do all what we can to help them. The multitudes desirous of spiritual instructions, instruction form a plenteous harvest, needing many active laborers, but few deserves that deserve that character. Christ is the Lord of the harvest. Let us pray that many will be raised up and sent forth. Let us pray for ourselves as well. Don't say, okay, I pray for my brethren so that God will send him to the harvest. Okay? Pray for yourself as well. Okay? Ano sabi sa Jeremiah? Here I am. Okay? Send me. Don't say, don't pray to God. Here I am. Send him. Okay? When we pray, let us pray to God, Lord, I am available. I am uh, uh, what's the other one? Available and uh, willing. Okay? We said last time we cannot separate these two. Your willingness and your being available cannot be separated. Okay? It must come always together. You may be uh, willing, but you're not have time. You're not available. You may, not be, uh, you, may not, you may have more time, but you're not willing to do what God wants us to do. So these two words must come together, okay? So we must pray to God, Lord, I heard your message again and again. I know the gospel. I can share the gospel. I attended the Discovering Life. And now we have a new program, okay, called Witness to Win. Lord, I want to be used by you. I know there are many peoples around, outside there, many peoples around me that doesn't know you, that really wants to seek you. But who will tell them? Okay? Can the blind uh, guide another blind? No, of course not. They will fall together. But if we guide them, if we share to them, if we come out and share the gospel to them, and I believe 
with all my heart that you know the gospel very well. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? That the Lord Jesus Christ died and he rose again and what? You means one. Before he rose, he was buried. That is the gospel. He died, he was buried, he rose again on the third day. And we are saying many times repeatedly that we cannot also separate these three words, these three occasions. If it's happened that there was no burial, what is the evidence that Christ really died? Then the resurrection is not true because there is no burying. Jesus did not, okay? If we said that there was no resurrection, then our faith is what? Useless. Our faith is futile because we are following a dead God. We are following a false God. No? We know, we know exactly what the gospel is. What hinders us to share it? You no, know, sometimes our testimonies hinders us from sharing the, uh, the gospel. Okay, why? I cannot share the gospel to my colleague, to my office mate. Kasi ako yung unang-unang nagre-reklamo pagka mababa ang ano eh. Ako yung unang-unang nagre-reklamo kapag ka maraming trabaho. Ako yung unang-unang umuwi. Oo. Ako yung, ako yung matigas ang ulo sa office. Or ako yung matigas ang ulo sa amin, sa bahay. How can you, sometimes it, it, it parts back to us, the testimony. That's why we have to guard even our testimony. Okay? So that people will believe in us when we share to them the gospel. You know? And of course, before we share to them the gospel, we have to pray that God will speak into the heart of that person before we even talk to them. So Christ is the Lord of the harvest, and let us pray that many will be raised, will be raised up and sent forth, who will labor in bringing souls to Jesus Christ. It is a sign that God is about to bestow some special mercy upon a people when he stirs them up to pray for it. Okay. Samuel Chadwick says, he called Satan's dread or his great fear, okay, his apprehension is nothing but prayer. Do you agree? Okay. He says that Satan's dread is nothing but prayer. He says, he added, his one concern is to keep saints from, from praying. Kaya anong ginagawa niya kapag uh, gusto natin mag-pray? Minsan inantok tayo. No? Do you pray? Or how, how's your prayer life? No? Do you pray? Yes. Kapag kakain. <laughs> kapag matutulog. Okay? That when I pray. Alright? Sabi, ang concern ni Satan is to keep us from praying. Because, you know, because he knows that there is power in prayer. Okay? He added, he fears nothing from prayerless studies. He fears nothing from prayerless work. He fears nothing from prayerless religion. Well, in fact, he said, he laughs at our toil. He mocks our wisdom. Okay? But he trembles when we pray. All right. Another, uh, Cooper and Newton. Okay, actually they are the author of, they are the writer of the famous uh, Christian song, Amazing Grace. Okay, he said, Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. Max Lucado said, when we work, we work. When we pray, God, work, God works. Which one do you prepare? We work or let's pray so that God will work. Okay. Brethren, our participation to prayers is very essential in the expansion of God's ministry. Let us commit ourselves in the prayer. You know, we set a 5.30 a.m. prayer. 
Okay, and I believe most of us now is doing that. Okay, and we have a common goal so that we can unite ourselves in prayer as such as a church so that we can live to, uh, up to God our request. We, had a, we have a lot of program, okay? We want to expand the ministry of God. We want to support those missionaries out there. We want to send for more uh, missionaries, okay, around the world. But uh, we must start in prayer. Prayer will require us a little bit of sacrifice, but it is worth doing for the glory of God. God is using our prayers to accomplish His will. So then let us pray more, pray more, and let us push more. What again is the meaning of push? Okay. Pray until something happens. Okay? So, why prayer is essential? in the expansion of God's uh, uh, ministry, in the expansion of God's territory, because first, that is where we're able to present our petition to God. Secondly, we are confident that God will grant us the power that we need because He is a power God, powerful God. And last, lastly, God is pleased in the prayer of the righteous. May I request everyone to please rise and let us pray. Father in heaven, I would like to thank you for this great privilege, Lord, that we were able to study your words this afternoon. Lord, I hope and pray that nangusap po kayo, Panginoon, sa aming po mga puso ngayong hapon. Lord, your challenge is there. Truly, there are a lot of uh, souls waiting to hear the gospel. There are lots of uh, people out there that uh, will be perished, Lord. If we will not pray for them, if we will not do our part as a Christian, as believers, then they will be perished, Lord. Help us to have this passion. Help us to have this compassion with them, Lord. And help us to look at them the way you look at them, Lord. And Lord, instill into our hearts, Lord, that we must do what you have commanded us to do, and that is to proclaim your words, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this afternoon, and uh, thank you for the, the freedom that we have and that we'll be able to study your words, Lord. Lord, we bring back all the glory and praises to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.